took three planes and two ferries to get there, only to find out that he had like three baby showers in the 48 hours that I was there. And then at the end of the trip, I realized that he was actually 10 years older than he said that he was. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Right. So I am so excited to have Jen Ruiz on with us today. She is so many things. She is a full-time traveler, travel blogger. She's huge on TikTok, Instagram, but she is also a lawyer and she is an author. So she recently wrote and published um, 12 trips in 12 months. And I'm super excited to talk to you today and to share your story. How are you? I'm good, Cassandra. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just so happy to see you. And I'm just, I've been watching you online and I'm just so inspired and just really happy for you. Like you're one of the people that I really root for on the sidelines. So I'm happy to see you. Thank you. That means so much. <laughs> um, of course. Um, so the way that I like to start the podcast recently is to ask people, how are they doing PMS? So P is physically, M is mentally, S is spiritually, because we all typically like, how are you? And we'll all reflexively say, oh, I'm fine. Um, but I really want us to get into the habit of like, really like, how am I really? Like really check in with ourselves. So how are you doing right now, PMS? Well, it's so funny that that's how you want to start because it's really been a big focus of mine this year, all three of those. So I started the year kind of unsure about a medical diagnosis, and then I got a positive one. So physically, um, just a better result, not necessarily like great to have, but not a bad thing, mm -hmm. something that can be worked with. And I think that that mm -hmm. moment was like a work up wake up call for me to be like okay mm -hmm. in traveling i really have to make sure that i take care of myself that i'm getting the proper nutrients that i'm getting the proper vitamins you know because it's really hard when you're on the road constantly yeah. so that's been a big focus of mine this year i ran a half marathon earlier in february um and just have been trying really hard to be more consistent about putting myself first physically so mm -hmm. that means eating well eating healthy things because it's very hard for me to sustain a fast go, go, go pace. If I'm, you know, yep. feeding myself with junk food, it's going to cause me to crash. So really trying to be cognizant of finding healthy food, despite wherever I may be and how difficult that may seem uh, and trying to be more steady about my exercise as well, which is also difficult when I'm on the road, but definitely um, I have made more time to be home and work on that. Just, I have class pass, I'm going to Pilates and weightlifting. And even if it's uh, modified exercises that I'm doing at a boot camp, I'm still, you know, getting through it. So physically that has been a big focus of mine this year, because if you travel full time, it will take a toll on your body. Um, yeah. Um, yep. And as a woman, I think when you get older, you just don't realize how much of a toll it takes. I think we think we're invincible and we can just push through everything, uh, but your body doesn't work that way. So physically, I'm doing my best to really care for my body. Mentally, same, right? Because <laughs> I knew that I was going to be going into this really intense period of time where I'm putting out a very personal piece of work that's open for the entire world to criticize. And I know that the criticism will come because I've already seen tastes of it in sharing bits and pieces of my story uh, as much as, you know, for every 10 positive comments, you can get one negative one. And that can really be jarring in the experience. So I have already, not to mention the self-imposed, you know, expectations yep. that I have of myself and, and the pressure to really perform because I feel this is a once in a lifetime moment where if I can nail it, it's like a make or break thing for my career. So, so much mental pressure that would cause me to normally just crack. So mentally I have been also very much taking care of myself preventatively. I've been meeting with a therapist yeah. and a psychiatrist um, multiple yeah. times, at least bi-weekly, um, so multiple times a month. And I really look forward to those sessions. I really enjoy having that. And I've had to get into the mindset that no matter what happens this summer with my book tour, no matter how the book performs, like I have already done a good job. Um, yes. And so that was a, a big one just to prepare me so that I wasn't feeling like I had to perform or reach a certain threshold and kept, you know, badgering myself for that. And then soul wise, 
Um, I would say that's maybe the toughest one because I get so distracted with the other two, but I have sure. been, I had made a conscious change again this year where I've always been a big manifester. I'm very big at putting intentions out into the universe and something shifted in me when I heard that meditating was a way of you receiving the answers to your questions. Uh, meditating was always something very difficult for me to do because my brain is, you know, constantly running. And recently mm -hmm. at Wits in Utah, I actually tried horse meditation, which was amazing because it allowed me to anchor into something other than just myself and allow my thoughts to be Ooh. directed towards the horse that, you know, you had to um, mimic them and you wanted them to mimic you. So you can't be anxious because the horse is going mm. to be anxious. So you have to be taking deep breaths and being relaxed and you'll see the horse change to adapt to the way that you are as well. So that connection gave me something to focus on rather than my thoughts are rambling. I can't possibly meditate. This is so hard. Um, and, yes. and I do think that there's, <laughs> there's value in that. And I want to work on having a two way channel with the universe yeah. and not just me putting my requests out there, but also receiving those messages as well. So that was a very long answer to your PMS question, but they've been so good yeah, thoughts on my mind. <laughs> So good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, the the horse meditation, I've never heard of it before, but a couple of summers ago, I had my son, my oldest son doing um, horseback riding lessons and learning horse husbandry because he has ADHD. And I realized that when he is with the horses, he is so like calm and just like Focus and it did so much good for his mind and his brain developmentally that that makes so much sense how meditation would also be similar because it's like there's like this large beast um, that you want to be in tune with in, in order to like have that connection. That, that makes so much sense. Super interesting. I'm going to look into that. Um, but thank you. Thank you for being so open and, and transparent about where you are. And I really second and I'm happy that you've come to the place where you're like, you know, you've done all the things and not to put all that pressure on yourself. Um, just as an outsider looking in, I can imagine that you are kind of like type A, like you have objectives and you get them done. And I just don't want you to put that extra burden on yourself because you already have done it and like you've done the work. And at this point, what will be, will be. And I know it's going to be successful, but I just don't want you to pressure yourself. But mm -hmm. so I'm happy that you have that in your mind already and that you are already, you have your team. So yeah. Yeah. So let's hop into the book. So the book is really interesting to me. When I heard about the premise from the get-go, 12 trips in 12 months is, it sounds like an undertaking, especially with what you mentioned, you know, how just traveling itself can be physically and mentally taxing. So what led you to deciding like, you know what, for the next 12 months, I'm going to have at least one trip per month. What led to that? Yeah, so it was my th uh, my 29th birthday. So it was I'm always very cognizant of the passing of time and how little time we have to do things. I think everybody always thinks that there's time, but for me time goes by very fast. So I never want to waste it and I thought this is the last year that I have of my 20s. That's it. When this year is over, I will never get to be in my 20s again. And that felt to me like it had some gravitas to it because this was the decade where you're supposed to have fun and you're supposed to do things that are, you know, kind of wild and spontaneous and crazy. Right. And for me, I had gone straight through my twenties, you know, through law school, I'd been barred, I'd worked as an attorney. Um, and so that time was escaping me without me really having the chance to live it to the fullest I felt. And at the same time, I was feeling so much pressure to be married with children by then. Uh, because, you know, even though it's something that people have commented to me multiple times, like, why do you care so much? It's almost impossible not to when that's all of the messaging that you receive from the world, that your like your entire value as a woman comes down to your ability to find a man, keep a man and bring life into the world. And if you fail at these things, you're crazy, you're a spinster, there's something wrong with you, you're damaged goods, you know, and so it's really hard not to have that be at the forefront, especially when you're 29 and an overachiever like me and you've done everything else right. But that relationship mm -hmm. portion 
it's like a group project, right? You require somebody else's participation in order to get the A plus. And so yeah. <laughs> to, to some extent, like that's out of my hands. And so for me, I had already so much anxiety with dating in South Florida, with trying to find the right person, really finding myself in positions where I wasn't, you know, I was giving so much of myself and not getting anything in return. And so I thought instead of spending this year worried about aging, worried about finding the right guy, worried about not being where I need to be, how can I actually celebrate myself? And how can I actually like do th something that I'm going to enjoy, something that I'm going to remember? And that's when I thought that since I had never used any extra birthday privileges, I'd never asked anybody to come to a week-long celebration or a month-long celebration. I've only ever used my one day. So I thought, why can't I expand that for myself? And why can't I do 12 birthday celebrations, you know, one trip every month? Because I really enjoyed that first one where I was in Athens. I realized that that day when I was exploring Athens on my 29th birthday, I had a great time. I saw amazing things. I was always going to remember that birthday as the birthday that I spent in Athens. And it didn't mm -hmm. matter who came to my party. It didn't matter that I was single or not. Like none of that mattered. I had a great day and I was always going to remember like that was a really beautiful sunny day. It was like 70 degrees just for me. And it, I got to go and explore all of these amazing places. And so I loved that feeling and I was chasing that feeling around the world while still battling with that internal and external pressure of 30 is coming. Have you done what you needed to do as a woman, which was really tough because I felt like I'd accomplished everything else but this thing, right? I was successful as an mm -hmm. attorney. I had, you know, I'd done all the right things it felt like, and it still felt like I'd failed. And so mm -hmm. I, I was grappling with that throughout the year, grappling with how I dealt with men generally, um, you know, mm -hmm. how I related to men, what I accepted from men, and really struggling to find my own self-worth, which I wish I could say that by the end of the book, like, magic happened and I just <laughs> <laughs> checked the box, but it's really been an ongoing process still to this day mm -hmm. um, where I work on it day after day and try to tell myself that I am enough, that I am, you know, mm -hmm. happy with where I am and in my own company. And it has to be something that you're okay with constantly practicing because if you allow yourself, there, there will be a lot of external moments. Um, I think especially for women, right? You attend other people's milestones. Yep. You go to other people's weddings. You see other people's yeah. baby showers. I just saw friends yesterday that I hadn't seen and I'd gone to their wedding and I spent a couple of hours with them and their toddler. And I was thinking to myself because the wife, she was like, I never expected to be here. Like I thought I would be like you. And I was like, I never expected to be like the rich aunt that's traveling. I thought I would be like you. <laughs> so um, so um, I think we all have those pressures. And so it's just a matter of how can you enjoy every life stage as it comes? I'm still, you know, hoping to find mm -hmm. a partner, hoping to have a child one day and it's taking me a while. And so how can I enjoy my life in the meantime? So I'm not sitting here in despair, like waiting for somebody to show up for my life to begin. Oh, I love that so much. And I want this message and your book to like reach really far and wide because one of the things that I, as I'm on the online space, I'm looking and I, and I hate, I hate the, the way that, um, young women are like living their lives, like just waiting for that man to come or living their lives just to be seen and be chosen. And it's just like, I get it. Cause to your point, there is a lot of pressure that is put on us from a very young age, before we even far before we get to our twenties for us to become wives and mothers. And that is like the culmination of your success, right? Regardless of what you've done. Um, so I get the pressure, but I just, I just want women just, just live, just live, keep living your life. And I love that you had so much self-awareness and not only self-awareness, but you had forethought, like, no, I'm not going to just sit around and wait. I'm going to live life while I have it. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I, I just love that so much. So you went to Greece. So you spent your birthday in Greece. Um, so tell me about how did you manage while, I'm assuming you were still working um, as an attorney. How did you make that happen just logistically in terms of time to be able to travel and maintain your nine to five? 
The first thing was that I switched from private law to nonprofit law. And that made a big difference for me because suddenly I had bank holidays. Whereas before mm. I used to have to work on Thanksgiving, on Christmas Day, and it was really hard to get any time Ooh. off. Yeah. And the time you would take, it would be, uh, you, people would be resentful of it. They wouldn't necessarily Ooh. want you to even take your time that you were allocated. So like, I remember once we had a pizza party on Christmas Day, and they were like, we're letting you out a few hours early to go to this pizza party. And I was like, just let me out a few hours early to go home. Why am I being held captive? <laughs> I don't want the pizza. <laughs> and so it always felt to me like I didn't have that time. So once I had those bank holidays, it was like I had a gift of time. Suddenly I have President's Day. I had a gratuitous day off on Monday, July 3rd, because 4th of July was on uh, the Tuesday. So they just went ahead and gave us Monday off too. I've never had that happen before. (laughs) And so just with those holidays, 10 days of PTO, and I would say three sick days that I took that I called out sick, um, doing my best to vary them. But also I feel like sick days are time that are allocated to you. And that's up to you to decide how you use them. If you're somebody who has certain number of appointments, if you're somebody who knows that you struggle with a lot of anxiety and mental health, like I don't think that you need to be, uh, stuck to your toilet to call it a valid sick day. I think that you can mm-hmm. actually be doing something for you and take that time that's there for you. My, I love that. You know, that's my personal belief. And so, yeah. uh, especially because law is such an intense field, there's so much that goes into it and you're dealing with so many heavy problems. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a mental health day and going and doing something totally frivolous and fun for you. And so, I took out, I took two sick days, one where I called out sick to go up the uh, hot air balloon during mass ascension at the Albuquerque hot air balloon fiesta with 300 other balloons Mm -hmm. at the same time, which was incredible. And the other one was to attend a VIP taping of the Chew, uh, where I had at Disney World, where I had the Carla Hall serving me chocolate croissants and we were on TV Mm -hmm. and I'm like, please don't let my boss be watching this right now because it's like (laughs) me and my co-worker. Yeah, (laughs) it's both. Was. We both called out. She knew something was up, and I was like, "She's gonna see us here on TV at Disney, just having having a good old time." Uh, <laughs> I hope she's not watching, but it was. I have no regrets, and I think mm-hmm. that sometimes you need to do that and take that time for you. And so it was. It felt like a mad rush at the end because I started to double up on trips. I think with that added thing of like, oh, this year is really coming to an end, and I've been able to take these trips. Like, let me take as many trips as I possibly can. Um, so it ended up being. 20 trips to 41 cities across 11 countries while being back in time for work on Monday morning. Um, wow. Took a lot of red eye flights. So I would like, instead of sleeping at the hotel that night, I would fly back that night. So if I leave at night, I can come back in the morning, like at 5 a.m., and then drive straight into work kind of thing. Um, so it was really exhausting. I don't know that I'd be able to do it now. Um, but at the mm-hmm. time, I think the adrenaline and that pressure of like, it's now or never was very motivating. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, so while you were in the middle of this, was, was there ever like a thought like, oh, maybe I shouldn't or like some like doubt that set in as to maybe this is too much or what am I doing this for? And how did you navigate? Yes, it all started to go south when I went to Greece to rendezvous with a Greek fisherman that I have met in January, and we have been talking Ooh. over WhatsApp. And then when I got there, I took three planes and two ferries to get there, only to find out that he had like three baby showers in the 48 hours that I was there. I don't understand either. He said like his friends had baby showers and then I wasn't invited. So I was just to like wait at home while he went for these events. And again, I was only there for two days um, and the events ended up taking a long time. And then at the end of the trip, I realized that he was actually 10 years older than he said that he was. Uh, (laughs) So that started like the downward spiral. Then the next trip to Mexico, I got there right as there was a storm that like got there the day I arrived and was going to be done the day I left. So the hurricane came with me and it canceled <laughs> it canceled my uh plans to go swimming with whale sharks which i had i had an incident where i lost the rental car keys and i had to get those replaced it was like 200 dollars to replace the rental car key which was such a waste of money uh yeah. and i had an issue with getting the golf carts mixed up because all the golf carts look alike and my key operated the one that I brought back with me, but they were like, this is not the correct golf cart. And I was like, I don't know what to tell you. It's a white golf cart. The key worked. I brought it back. (laughs) 
what more yeah. do you want from me? <laughs> I don't know what else to do. You didn't tell me there was an identifier or anything. Uh, and so there was that incident where we were like fighting over my license at that point. Um, and yeah, there were, there were moments where I was like, why am I doing this? Definitely at that moment where I was, you know, at the ferry trying to find the key after just having gotten into that heated golf cart incident, dumping the context of my bag out over and over again, trying to find the stuff that I was missing, the rain pouring on me, looking like a crazy person in Mexico. And I'm like, why am I... Why am I doing this? <laughs> what is happening right now? And who do I have to prove? Like, what am I, who am I trying to impress? What is happening here? So <laughs> there were definitely moments where I, I doubted it. And thankfully that next trip in July to the South of France was one of the best trips of the year, which was just so relaxing and beautiful and everything I needed it to be. And that really helped me restore my faith. And, you know, this challenge is going to be okay. The next trip I went with my parents after we had a death in the family and so it was really nice for mm. us to spend that time together everybody um we actually mm. missed the funeral but we had this already planned and so i think yeah. it was what everybody needed like a kind of a celebration of life in the way and for us to celebrate that yeah. we had each other um yeah and so it was it was yeah. a lot of ups and downs in the yeah. year <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You mentioned the the trip with your parents. I was actually going to ask you, like, were all the trips solo? So no, but the majority of them were solo. I'm assuming correct. Uh, mainly, yeah. I I would say just a handful were with others. The one with my parents, mm -hmm. the one with mm -hmm. friends to both the Grand Canyon and then also Iceland, and mm -hmm. my coworker that we played hooky to go to Epcot. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think there is, I see there's a growing community of solo travelers, solo female travelers, which I love. Um, for those who are listening and like, this is inspiring. I want to do this, but I'm scared. What would be your tidbit of advice for a solo female traveler? I think that you can book a tour for whatever it is that you want to do. And that way, let's say that you're nervous about going out at night. You can book a haunted walking tour. You can book a food tour. You can book something where there is a guide that is designated to make sure that you get there and back safely and that is motivated to do so because you tip them at the end of the tour, right? So they don't want to okay. lose you along the way. <laughs> and that has other people there that are going to be built in people for you to talk to during the tour. They're attending, you have maybe two hours together. Afterwards, they might invite you somewhere with them. But it's a good way to be with a group if you're nervous about being out on your own. I love that. Yeah. Love that. Great idea. Great idea. Um, so talk to me about the transformation that you've experienced. Um, let's say when you first initially decided, you know what, I'm going to do this, this, these next 12 months, I'm going to make the best of it and travel. Um, so the transformation from that point until you actually completed the 12 plus trips that you, that you set out to do. So how was, what was your mindset like before versus after, and maybe even your self-confidence? Well, I didn't realize what I was chasing, but it was really that feeling of presence that I think had eluded me for so long because I am somebody that lives in my head and I'm very anxious. So I'm always thinking about the future and it's very hard for me to be in the moment. I mentioned I have those difficulties with meditating. And so when traveling, you don't really have a choice but to be present, right? Because you're bombarded with new sights, new sounds, new uh, smells, new textures, new everything. So you have to be present processing all of that new information you don't have the ability to be lost in your head because you're just in mm -hmm. the moment focusing on what's happening and, and all of this new sensory overload that you're getting and so mm -hmm. I actually found that I really enjoyed that I felt lighter when I traveled and I didn't realize that that was why it was because I was just focused on where am I going? What am I doing right now? What does the street smell like? Oh, that's new. I never seen that before. Like, you know, and so it was a much more enjoyable way to spend the time than constantly, you know, in your own thoughts, worry, doing those things. And that was what I was chasing when I was traveling. And so part of that transformation was in finding that joy in my own company and finding that ability to spend time by myself and think, wow, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. I don't need anybody else here to make that worthwhile. Like that was great just to ask myself, 
What do I want to do today? What do I want to see? What are the things I want to participate in? And I can have a blast doing that. I called myself my own best travel partner, right? Because I'm always down. I'm always up for the nap. Like I'm, you know, it's always like, it's just, it's a really great way to develop that relationship with yourself in a fun way. Um, And at the same time, I also think that you end up realizing that even though you're alone, or you're traveling alone, that you're going to meet other people along the way. You are not in solitude in this world, right? There's other people that you're interacting with on a daily basis. And so because of that, actually traveling solo allows you to have that deeper connection with people because you don't have the buffer of somebody who speaks your language, somebody who's using your currency, somebody who you talk to as your safety net. And I think that there's no wrong way to experience travel, but it's definitely a difference. Like if I was traveling with a guy, I can kind of just relax. If anything happens, maybe he takes care of it. We have each other to Mm -hmm. like debrief on, you know, Mm -hmm. whereas when you're by yourself, you're like, okay, that was really cool. I kind of want to talk to somebody about that. And then you get into the taxi and you're like, that building really cool. Huh? How long has that been there? Um, And so now you start to get really, you know, unexpected connections with people around you that you make you realize that you're never alone. As long as you're out yeah. there, you're curious, you're putting yourself in a position to be interacting with others, you will be welcomed by the world. And actually, that's why I call it solo travel magic, because I found that the more curious that you are and the more open that you are, people really want you to leave their countries with a good impression of them. Nobody mm-hmm. wants you to be like, oh, that place sucked. So everybody's like, you're right. you know, they want you to be like, <laughs> did you eat this? Did you do that? Did you try this? Like, they're really excited for you to have the best experience. And when you're by yourself, they'll usually invite you to different things. So I had a nine person Italian family invite me in their car to go tour the monasteries of Meteora before that time ran out. Right. And that was a really fun experience with them. Uh, I had an opera dedicated to me in Florence where I got there early and I spoke with the performers and just by virtue of having been interested, talking to them beforehand at the halftime, they announced a change to the show and uh, dedicated us special song to a lady in the front row and so it was to me and then they just like sang and serenaded me and I think that this is what happens it's just because I showed up and I was like hey what's up I'm early I know I'm early oh silly American (laughs) And (laughs) um, and so just by talking to them they were really happy to share you know what is this venue how long have you been opera singers how often do you do this show um and I think that that helps because people see that you take an interest and people want to share their life's passion with you like most people really enjoy what they do and they're excited to do it um so yeah it was it's just so many ways that I found that you can manifest that solo travel magic just by virtue of taking the leap and putting yourself out there I love that have you kept in contact with anybody that you've met um during specifically that 12 month period have you made long, lifelong friends or anything? Yeah, almost everybody because of social media. So now I have like sure. such a random connection of contacts from all over the world. Definitely one of the um, then teenagers in the nine person Italian family. He actually mm-hmm. was inspired to become a blogger because he had met me. Nice. Um, and so, and I also follow the uncle still. He's always traveling. He's in like almost his 200th country or something ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. The man goes everywhere. Uh, I don't even know. I think there's like 187 official countries, but that's just to show like <laughs> however many, yeah, can, like, he's been there. to so many of them. Um, and so yeah. I follow his adventures. I have uh, definitely people from all over the world that I've met still, we just connect at the moment. And then they just you know wish me well cheer mm-hmm. me on if I'm at wherever in the same place again great and I think it's a really nice web to have yeah for sure for sure um what is if there was one thing that you want the reader to take away from this book what would it be that there is something to enjoy in every life stage that you are in and I think so many mm-hmm. times we wish time away we wish that we would get to the next stage. We wish that things would be easier. You know, this these past four years, we wish to be out of the pandemic. Like we're just wishing time away constantly instead of being like, what can I do with this time that I've been given to make the best out of it? And so for me, I definitely wish to be at a point where you know, I have my partner and it doesn't feel like I'm doing so many things alone because I think that's why we have partners and that's why we want companionship in life. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I have to understand that 
up until then, there's still things to celebrate about my life as it is that I am going to miss when I am not in this stage anymore. And that it's inevitable because things are transitory. So, you know, what are these amazing bucket list trips that I want to do by myself right now that maybe if I have a child one day would be more difficult for me to do or more difficult for me Mm -hmm. to take the time and and just go on my own. So how can I do that now? Mm -hmm. What can I knock out right now? Um, How can I make the most of I'm really close with my mom where I've noticed that when I have a partner, me and my mom just naturally talk a little bit less because you already have your partner to debrief with. Um, whereas, you know, yeah. I currently talk with my mom like three times a day. So how can I maximize this time and learn everything yeah. about my mom possible and do fun things together because we have the time, right? So what are the pros of the life stage that you're in? Because I know that while you're wishing for something else, you might be ignoring something really wonderful right in front of you that you won't realize is important until it's gone. And so I've tried very much to identify that and embrace that. And I hope that in reading this book, uh, you'll be inspired to do the same. Oh, my goodness. So beautiful and so powerful. Um, they say that hindsight is twenty twenty, just because we we're at least for me, I am always like on to the next, like I've done this thing, check, let's keep going. And then you look back and it's like, oh, there was so much more happening at the time that I just did not appreciate. So thank you for that reminder. Um, Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Jen. I am really excited. People, please go buy the book. Um, Call your library. If you can't afford it, call your library, have them order the book. That way you can read it. Um, and besides that, I'm going to, of course, drop the link in the, of the book in the bio. So that way it's a click, a quick, easy click for you guys to go purchase it, but also where can we, um, find you? Yes. So you can find me at Jen on a jet plane, like leaving on a jet plane, uh, my website, Jen on a jet plane.com and all socials. And then at 12 trips in 12 months on Instagram, and then also 12 trips in 12 months.com where I have a free webinar to help you plan your own travel challenge. If you feel so inspired. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. Um, really, really excited for this book and thank you so much for your time. I'm grateful to have got a chance to talk to you today. Likewise. Thank you. you.